In order to calculate points of curvature, so we're talking about maximum, minimum, or points of inflection, we now need to use the second derivative. Now, we've done the second derivative a few times through this course, but without really talking about why we're doing it. And this is really important because this tells us what happens to the curve after the stationary point. So whether after the stationary point the curve goes up, or whether after the stationary point the curve goes down, or whether it continues with the same gradient. It's the second derivative that allows us to find that. We often say it measures how concave a curve is. So let me just show you what I mean. In a minimum point, you would have a point like this, so let's just call this our stationary point, and after the point it goes up in order for this to be a minimum. This means that the second derivative here, d2y dx squared, has got to be positive because remember this is a positive gradient. So anything that goes upward is positive, anything that goes down is a negative gradient. So in this case, d2y dx squared is greater than or equal to zero because it's positive. And this kind of curve, if I draw it properly, gives us a minimum curve as we've just discussed on the previous slide. Similarly, if you have a stationary point, and straight after the stationary point, the curve goes downwards, we see a negative gradient. We can say here that the second differential, d2y dx squared, must now be less than zero. We call this point a maximum point as we've just discussed. So these are just little visual features that we'll have to familiarize ourselves with. With a point of inflection, we have already said that we have a flat point, so it could be positive and positive. Gradients, remember, we're talking about. And it could be flat and negative and negative. That should be a little bit more curvy because we're talking about curves. So this here is a point of inflection. Now, let's just discuss how we do this numerically. You found the gradient by doing dy by dx of a function. You equal it to zero because remember that at stationary points, so I'm just going to shorten this, at stationary points, dy by dx equals to zero as we've stated earlier. So you found your stationary points or the coordinates of the stationary points by equaling it to zero. You then want to know what kind of stationary point it is. All you do, you take your dy by dx, and you differentiate it the second time. That gives you your second differential here. Once you know your second differential, you substitute your x or y values in there, or both, and then you look at whether you get a positive answer, a negative answer, or a zero. Okay. So in this point here, in our points of inflection, these are the only points where we say that d2y dx squared equals to zero. And then this requires a little bit more investigation. And we investigate by using gradients before and after the point. So let me just highlight these for you here. We are saying that if we have a second derivative greater than zero, you will have a minimum point. If the second derivative is less than zero, you will have a maximum point. And if the second derivative is equal to zero, we have a point of inflection which we will investigate a little bit further, and I'll show you how that's done in an example. So just to summarize, stationary points can be found by doing dy by dx equals to zero. You'll see that we'll do so much of this that this will just be something that you'll manage to learn. But the second part of it, which is important, is finding out the nature of the stationary points, what type of stationary point this is. We used the second differential. Now, in order to find the second differential, we say that the derivative or the second derivative must be greater than or equal to zero. If it is greater than or equal to zero, you get a minimum point. If the second differential is less than or equal to zero, you get a negative answer. So that gives you a maximum point. And if the second differential is equal to zero, we'll deal with this shortly, but we call this a point of inflection. Now this can often get quite confusing. So I like to think of it as the second der derivative being positive. So when you're positive, you can imagine that that's a smiley face. So a smiley face looks like a minimum point when you sketch it out. Uh, second differential being negative is obviously, you can think about it being an upside down curve, a negative face or a negative smile. So that gives you a maximum point 
And a point of inflection is easy to remember, so that equals to zero. So you will have curves which you're dealing with, which have positives and negatives and maybe a point of inflection at the same time. And you have to conclude or analyze those graphs or those <clears throat> values fairly quickly. So it's important to find some faster ways of working that out. <laughs>